All right. Happy Tuesday, blessings, everyone. I think we are live and in the group and getting going. And we are going to be talking about miracle mindset today. So I'm going to be reporting, recording, reporting. Well, I will be reporting some things that I've seen. But we're going to be recording this episode um, about miracle mindset. And I am really um, excited to talk about this. It's been on my heart and mind for a couple of days now. And I have some verses down below for us to talk about as we get going. Excuse me, post lunch. Okay. So let's get going. I think I, um, I think I've actually even figured out how to put a little bit of music in the, in, in the front. <laughs> so let's get going. Welcome back to Bursting with Blessings, where God is king and we are his mighty army, co-creating a legacy of blessings and an inheritance for our children's children. I'm your host, Leah Mason Virgin, and I am your certified life coach, business coach, and author at BurstingWithBlessings.com. And today we are going to be talking about a miracle mindset. That's right, ladies. We are going to be talking about a miracle mindset and praying for the miracles and seeking the miracles that we want in our life. And I've got some scripture for us today. And I'm really excited to to get talking about this. And where did this come from? Well, I've been thinking about I've been thinking about this for my own life, about the things that um, I've wanted my business growth journey, which has been super hard. I've been pretty transparent, not overly transparent about this journey and how hard it's been to be in the online space um, and to grow um, and to show up unapologetically um, as a Christian and um, to be really um, consistent uh, and and still like serve my family, um, you know, and thinking about the miracle of how God has brought me here to this place and kind of my mindset around miracles and around um, God um, showing up in our lives. It's kind of just been um, percolating in my mind and I've talked a lot about it. I know that God performs amazing miracles. And if you're with me live today, let me know hashtag live or hashtag replay. I have talked a lot about the fact that God often wants us to become the miracle that we are praying for. And what do I mean by that? I don't mean that God can't instantly bring about um, a miraculous a transformation or a miraculous healing uh, or or anything like that. But what I found a lot in my life is that God will bring me tools and strategies, people, healers into my life to bring about the things that I am praying for and that I am really, really wanting, right? And so... I <laughs> I was scrolling through uh, Instagram the other day, and I saw uh, a pastor. And I don't really know him, but I just saw this reel, and he said, "You know, God will often use the things in your home to bring about the miracle, right?" And and what that means is like he used the one jar of oil in the woman's house. Um, and, you know, told her to go get, gather every jar, pour oil into it. And once they had no more jars, that was it. That was all she got, um, at that stage. Who knows what happened, you know, down the line and how God provided for her. But that was the way that God provided in that situation. That was the way he chose to glorify his name and to serve her. And if we, if we, one of the things that I think we really need to wrap our minds around is that we are here to glorify God. We are not here to be served by God. Okay? So let me say that. 
I think sometimes we get this idea that God, like we're here and God's just going to serve us. No, 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 no. We are to be a bond servant for Jesus Christ. Um, we don't like the word slave, right? We, we don't like the connotations of that. Um, and Jesus even said, I no longer call you slaves because slaves don't know what their, what business their master is about. Um, I now call, you know, I now call you, ooh, I don't know. Oh, um, but we're now no longer called slaves. So I'll, I'll get that verse down into the show notes and into the comments here. Or one of my awesome friends who, who's listening along right now, you can go to BibleGateway.com and look that up for me. Um, but, you know, he, you know, Jesus also said, you know, who are my brothers and sisters and my mother? They're all around me, right? You know, we are considered child, we are considered children of God, right? But ultimately, we are here to glorify and worship God. It's God's kingdom agenda that we should be about, right? How many times did Jesus say, I'm here to do the will of my father. I'm here to do the will of my father. I'm here to glorify his name. And then by extension, because he is God, Jesus is glorified, right? And, and God said, I will make your enemies a footstool. Um, you know, so the mindset that we need to have I really want us thinking about when it comes to miracles is how will this prayer that I'm praying for myself or my family member or friend or whatever, how will this ultimately glorify God? How will this grow my faith? How can I be a part of this miracle so that I grow my faith, right? Because the testing of our faith produces perseverance. We're here to cultivate the fruits of the spirit. We're here to magnify God's kingdom agenda. So it, 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 it all comes down to coming into a more deeper dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ, right? And, you know, and, 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 and then the pastor this Sunday who had a brain aneurysm and went through this massive stroke and then he was talking about God can instantly do things, right? So here's some of the verses that I pulled out for us. Um, Matthew 9, 22, the complete Jewish Bible version, Yeshua, Jesus, turned, saw her and said, courage, daughter, your trust has healed you. And she was instantly healed, right? Matthew 26, 53, don't you know that I can ask my father and he will instantly provide me more than a dozen armies of angels to help me, right? Mark 9, 24, instantly the father of the child exclaimed, I do trust, help my lack of trust. Exodus eleven nine. 9, then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you so that my wonders... God's wonders will be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And 2 Peter 1, 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Jesus Lord. And one of the things I realize is that um, we Christian, miracle, uh, Christian women, Christian miracles, yes, we are miracles that we have come to believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That is a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. High fives. Um, in, in American Christian culture, uh, we, we have a lot of mindset issues and we have a lot of like um, wants that are not needs, um, but yet our God is an abundant God. So yet sometimes we feel guilty for asking for things. And, you know, I just, I want us to grapple with the idea of how is what you're asking God going to be manifested by him. Because I don't believe in manifestation, the crock uh, that I see in the online space of like, 
oh, I just, you know, I thought about my 10K followers and I manifested another 20K followers. Like, no, that's not a thing. <laughs> that's not a thing. You were doing something in the background, whether it was running Facebook ads or whatever, right? You were actively doing something. All things that are miracles, all things come from God. And when I mean manifest, I mean come forth from God through whatever means he so chooses to glorify his name. Again, I want us constantly have a mindset that comes back to how can I glorify God in this? All right? Today is my 24th anniversary. I have been married for 24 years, well, not quite, 2 p.m. was when our wedding started, but it's 12, 23 p.m. But today is our anniversary, and what what I wrote on my Facebook page was a, it was a testimony and a glorification of God, of what he has done in my life, healing me, blessing my marriage, healing my husband, Open his eyes. He is an amazing and wonderful, godly man, head of our household. We are one flesh. And when I mean head of the household, I don't mean he's above me and I'm below him or he's in front of me and I'm behind him. I don't believe in that. I believe we are one flesh, right? But that there is a hierarchy to certain decisions, right? Okay. I'll talk about that another day. But anyway, but what I really want us to focus in on is that like my husband was not a believer when we got married. And I'm not suggesting that to anyone. That does not mean, oh, it happened to Leah. I should go do that. No, that's not what I'm saying. It, it was a miracle that our marriage thrived and that my husband came to Jesus. It was a miracle that um you know that that we had children given the things that we had to go through um we had a miracle adoption journey um we've gone through you know health and healing crises we've there's so many things in 24 years that a smiling picture cannot show right but miracle mindset Having this idea, this mind of like, I will glorify God however he chooses to bring the miracles, manifest the, the miracles, whether that's telling me to look around my house and figure out what I have to provide for the miracle, whether that's guiding me to a healer, right? I mean, I recently had a homeopath help me with with some hormonal depression that I was going through because I'm 46 and things are changing. Things are really changing, right? A miracle mindset, but also here's another part of the miracle mindset that I wanna wrap our minds around is that when we are looking at the world and we're feeling discouraged because we are in a massive spiritual warfare and battle right now, we don't get discouraged. We don't get discouraged. We use discouragement as encouragement to ask God how we can be a part of the change. What do we need to learn or to do or to become to be a part of glorifying God? A part of revival. Revival after there was literally uh, satanic worship at a, a, a music conference. And what does God do? He creates massive revival. Miracles never stop. But we need to be asking God for God-blessed eyes to see solutions and be a part of the miracle and to remind ourselves of the miracles in God's word and to say, hey, God, you showed up in a miracle way by taking a jar of oil and telling a woman to pour it in multiple jars. Please tell me what I am to do in the midst of this circumstance so that it be can become miraculous and I can speak of your glory and glorify you. Or God, are you looking to make an instant multiplication? And I just stand here 
and worship you over it. I think as American culture women, sometimes we get so caught up in a certain way that we think God should show up and will show up that we don't just start pointing to the Bible and saying, God, this was so cool. Hey, God, you, you, you sent the ravens to minister and bring manna and provision. You did this. You did that. It was so cool. This is awesome. This is glorified. I just praise him. I just be like, well, this was cool, God. Hey, Jesus, you spit in the dirt and put mud on a man's eyes and send him to wash. I mean, my God, that man, the faith to be like, I I'm sorry, but I am. I mean, as much as I was a nurse and I did some ewy things that nobody wants to know about. Like, I can't even imagine being like, oh, Jesus, that's super cool. Thanks for the mud spit on my eyes. I think that I'm just going like I can't even imagine that he wasn't like, I want to claw it off right now. There's a faith piece in that. There's an anticipa anticipation mindset to the miracle. Right? And just pointing out, God, this is so cool. God, you brought somebody to, to Paul to like lower him down in a basket to bring that miracle provision, that miracle protection. What do you want me to do to be a part of protecting my family? What miraculous way, what mindset do I need? Because I'm going to tell you, ladies, and you know I'm always hashtag real and raw. I am a woman that tends to gravitate, gravitate towards discouragement and depression and, and wanting to give up. This is what God wants for us. He wants us to have a miracle mindset all the time. A, hey God, what do you want me to do today? To glorify you, to edify your kingdom agenda, to talk about a miracle awesomeness. Right? Like, like I, I want us thinking about that. How do we continue to cultivate a miracle mindset every day and not grow weary in the doing of it? Because here's the other thing, right? I mean, think about like uh, Abraham. You know, he was like, eh, where's my miracle? <laughs> where's my miracle, God? Okay, how about I just go, you know, shag the chick over here instead? You know, my wife says it's cool, yo, right? Like, I, and, and, and think about, was it Ezekiel? I don't know. One of them was complaining. And God was like, I heard your complaints and you're going to be in trouble now. And Moses, he was going to come into the promised land, but he was so angry at the people. And by the way, this, I really believe that he was angry at God. I really do. I'll tell you why. Because I have anger issues. And so, like, I resonate with Moses on this. Think about it. He took the stick and he was like, smack into the rock when God said, speak to the rock. He smacked it. Because he was like, why do I have to deal with this? I don't want to have to be making a miracle for these people. I could totally see myself doing that. Jesus is over here laughing, going, I know. I can see you doing that too. <laughs> I guess Jesus, he's working on my, he's been working on my anger issues, right? Like instead of having a hot head, having discouragement and anger, more of a mindset of like, all right, God, like I I'm going to trust and obey and walk in faith. And I'm going to keep looking in the scripture at all these different miracles. I'm going to talk to you about them. I'm going to talk to everybody else about them. And I'm going to be proclaiming that I believe this good news, right? Psalm 68, the women with the good news are a mighty army, right? We don't want lackluster lives. We want a miracle mindset that perseveres, that sustains what we see every day swirling around us or however long it takes to get to that miracle. I don't know about y'all, but there have been many times where I'm like, God, like, where you're not showing up fast enough. 
you know I keep it real up in here. Right? But it says God is working all things together for my good. Because I love him and I am called according to his purpose. He wants us filled with the peace of Christ. And the only way to fill up with the peace of Christ is to keep reading the word. And keep eating that manna. And keep nourishing our souls so much on that word. That the world's word doesn't get in doesn't become the undertow that brings us away and thinks that we're not going to get our miracle that we're not going to be a part of something amazing that we can glorify God over and speak to and praise so I just want us thinking on that today and I'm going to pray over us you know what I'm going to remind us Daniel 6 16 your God whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. He delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. And remember, he didn't take him out of the lion's den. He just shut the lion's mouth while Daniel sat there in the lion's den, staring at some lions that could tear him limb from limb. That's a man of, that's a man of faith. I'm not really sure how I would react in that circumstance. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't lie. There is so much I'm thinking about right now in this war world of spiritual warfare and of my own comfort. But what can we sacrifice? Because he sacrificed so much for us. That's what I'm thinking on. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we humbly come before you with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus God Almighty, that we have such easy access to your scripture. We can read all these miracles. We can be a part of the miracle. We can become the miracle. We can, we can receive healing in miraculous and strange, Jesus. Okay, strange. The mud with the spit. A little strange. Jesus, I just pray that you would give us a miracle mindset, that you would imprint your Holy Scripture upon our hearts and minds, that you would help us not to be discouraged, but to be encouraged, that we would keep looking and seeking to see and to glorify you and to be a part of your kingdom agenda. Please surround us with hedges of protection. Rebuke the devourer far away from us and help us to shine your light in such a way that others see and glorify you and come to know you and to be saved. And help us to persevere in the testing of our faith. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, my friends, for joining me today. If you are wanting coaching to become the miracle, to transform your mindset and to transform your life, to grow spiritually, mentally, emotionally, then come join me on a call and let's see which coaching program is right for you right now in your journey with Jesus Christ. And may God bring you into a deeper, more dynamic relationship with him through his word and through his spirit each and every day. Amen. And amen. All right, my friends. Thank you, Stephanie, for popping on. Love you, hon. I'll see you guys.